Okay, thank you, Michael. Uh, afternoon, everybody. Um, uh, I'm sort of setting the scene a little bit for what's going to occur in this session today, but also uh, three sessions we have tomorrow on engaging with the private sector as, as well. Um, I think this year um, we realized that there was a lot to talk about in terms of private sector partnerships, and we're realizing that <coughs> there is a big role for the private sector to play in all sorts of development issues, including, uh, including education. Um, but what I want to talk about this afternoon is, is really very much about partnerships, uh, the active engagement of the private sector with NGOs or with government or, 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 or with both. Uh, and I really want to start off by saying, for me, that's not about companies giving you money. Uh, that's not about philanthropy. It's much, much more strategic than simply writing a check. Uh, in fact, I would go further and say that increasingly now, large companies, big brand name companies are not interested in just writing you those checks. And there is a, a significant move away, I think, from, uh, from philanthropy. Because the private sector, I think, is recognizing that there are quite some limitations uh, of, of philanthropy. Um, uh, I think that sort of traditional welfare approach that um, often uh, leads to dependencies is recognized as, as, as not terribly sustainable. Um, I, I think that traditional philanthropy also fails to recognize the strengths that often exist in communities and there's a, a tendency to fly in a foreign solution into poor countries uh, in ways that often, of, often, often don't work. Philanthropy often doesn't address the root causes of many of the problems that we, uh, that we face. And increasingly, you know, philanthropy is not well aligned with what the private sector wa wants to do uh, I I I in many cases. Um, in, in many ways, philanthropy makes people feel good. Uh, it helps them perhaps justify the profits that they're making. Uh, but I think there's a huge opportunity cost associated with philanthropy. And one of the things I say to businesses these days is there's usually something better you can do with your money than simply give it away to, to an NGO or, 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 or a local government. And, and the much more strategic thing to be thinking about is how do you use your assets and expertise in a company to align with your objectives and the objectives of your, of, of, of your partner as well. A and I think that emphasis on assets and expertise, which might include financial assets, but might include more physical assets and tangible assets and knowledge and expertise is something that I really want to stress when, when, when we talk about uh, partnerships. So, so money might be part of a partnership, um, but I think there's very much a move away from money being the only uh, link in a, in, 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 in a partnership. So I think there are, there are three very important principles when it comes to, to partnering. Uh, and I think if you do want to work with the private sector and the private sector wants to work with government or NGOs, there are three things to think about um, 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 to begin with. One is I think good, good partnerships are based on equity. Equity does not mean equality. You don't have to be the same size. You can have a big multinational corporation having a partnership with a, with a, with a relatively small NGO. Um, it's not about equality of size, but it's about fairness. Uh, and I think in a partnership, a partnership needs to be fair. Uh, and, and I think that both sides need to recognize what they are getting from the other side. One of the most common reasons for partnerships to fail, I think, is a misunderstanding of what the other partner is bringing. Uh, you know, the private sector thinks the NGO is going to bring more, the NGO thinks the private sector is going to supply more money, and suddenly it all falls apart. Secondly, I think any partnership must be entirely transparent. Uh, and again, I think uh, from the private sector increasingly, that transparency, that accountability is absolutely, uh, ab absolutely crucial. You know, the private sector, particularly big brands, cannot afford to get involved with NGOs where there are dodgy practices going on behind the scenes. And so that, that transparency is absolutely important. And then the last thing I think that's important is, 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 is mutual benefit. 
Again, the partnership does not have to be equal, but you have to demonstrate that there is a benefit to both parties. And, and this, I think, is the difference between a real partnership and, and philanthropy. Um, because I think there should be a benefit to the business. You know, this is not a business giving away some of its profits because it feels it ought to. A good partnership will provide a business with a good story to tell, which will enhance its brand and its reputation and its tr trust and its social license to operate. In some cases, a partnership might even generate commercial activities that, that create profits as well. Now, I'll come back to that issue in, in, in just a while. So I think there are, there are four main ways of working uh, with the private sector uh, in, 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 in partnerships. Um, one is philanthropy, but as I said before, I think most companies who are thinking about strategic social responsibility are very, move, very much moving out of philanthropy um, in, 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 in a big way. Although some of that philanthropic support might include things like employee engagement and volunteering, and I'll, I'll come back to that issue in, 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 in just a while. Secondly, um, you can work with the private sector on sort of longer-term partnerships through things like strategic community investment that tackle some of these big issues around sustainability, sustainable development, including, uh, including things, like, uh, th things like education. Uh, and that's very much, I guess, what we're talking about here today a, a, a lot, which is sort of um, working, collaborating together on these common mutual benefits. But there are a couple of other areas that we ought to think about as well, because the private sector is, is, is moving in this direction as well. I think there are lots of companies out there today who are also interested in advocacy. You know, advocacy used to be the realm of politicians and perhaps government sometimes and the realms of NGOs who were advocating for change, who were proposing solutions to certain development challenges. But there are many businesses now who are getting interested in advocacy and advocating what they think is right. Uh, and they, often, they will often want to do that with partners, uh, sometimes with NGOs, sometimes with governments, and sometimes with other businesses as well. So you know, if you're in the business of creating change and tackling a particular issue around education, it may well be that you know, using advocacy as one of your tools and, and getting businesses to use their considerable influence that they often have is, is, is one of the things you can also think about uh, as, as well. And last but not least, there's a bit of a revolution going on uh, within the social responsibility movement at the moment. Uh, and a lot of businesses now are talking about shared value. In other words, creating value for society, but also creating value for themselves as well. And this is the realm I talked about before. This is the realm of businesses working on particular social needs or environmental needs and at the same time generating a competitive advantage for themselves which equates ultimately to profitability. So this is about actually the private sector trying to meet the needs of people, their development needs in particular, in ways that, are, that can actually generate uh, profits at, at, at the same time. Um, if you feel that is a rather difficult idea that, you know, companies might be making profits out of the poor or making profits out of the education, out of education, I think you need to think again. Because if you really want initiatives to scale up, then profits are a magical thing to generate. Businesses will meet more social needs if they can generate profits out of meeting those social needs. And so that's something to, 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 to bear in mind. Um, there are, I think, some real common challenges uh, for partnerships. When I talk to the private sector, I think the struggle that they have all the time is finding the right partners. Um, I think businesses, you would be surprised how much time businesses actually spend on finding partners that they can work with in a way that is trusted, in a way that is collaborative, and in a way that really can deliver these mutual benefits that I, that I talked about. But one of the things that businesses often also want to do is engage their staff. Um, there is a great interest in much of the private sector around things like employee volunteering, 
in a meaningful way. And I, I stress in a meaningful way because a lot of employee volunteering is not meaningful. Um, you know, if you want to send your staff off to clean a beach, then call it a team building exercise. Don't call it social responsibility because it's, it's nothing of the sort. So that's a big challenge and I'm going to come back to that in a, in, a, in a little while. Thirdly, you know, what businesses want to do is achieve results and that, need, that requires measurement. Uh, and I think one of the things that many businesses are recognizing is that they are, if they are getting involved in partnerships, they want to have measurable outcomes, they want to have measurable impacts, and they want to achieve some, some real results. And for the private sector, don't forget that they will always want to communicate this. The private sector these days is producing their annual sustainability reports, their annual CSR reports. They need to have stuff to write in those reports because you can't keep repeating the same stuff. So... Never forget, I think, in a partnership with business, they will want to see meaningful results, not just in the long term, but often in the short term as well. And here there is another tension between people who work in the development field, which are used to having results in a decade, and people in the private sector who want to have results next week. Uh, and that is, a, that is, a, that is a, a real challenge sometimes. Let me go back to this, this issue of volunteering. Um, I thought I would illustrate the, 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 the tensions around volunteering by using a little bit of a slightly funny couple of quotations. So on the left-hand side, you've got a piece of research that says, uh, recent research by the Center for Corporate Public Affairs in Australia uh, shows that 72% of Australian companies have increased employee morale, engagement, and teamwork as one of their key corporate responsibility agendas. And on the right side, something I see all the time, a quotation from a school teacher saying, our school's been painted so many times, I can't remember what color it's supposed to be. I'd much, pr I'd much rather companies gave us what we need, expertise, mentoring, and resources. And that's, a, that, that's a quite a funny quotation, but unfortunately, I see a lot of this. I see an awful lot of painting of walls in schools that don't require them. And I see an awful lot of meaningless volunteering that actually does not create much of a change. Uh, so if you are going to go down that road of engaging with people from the private sector and their staff, then I think we ought to be thinking about making sure that they are doing something very, very meaningful. So, you know, don't get them, don't get them painting walls and don't get them visiting orphanages, please. Um, what is much more strategic, I think, is illustrated by this quotation here from the chief executive of Af AstraZeneca. Um, for the developing communities, we transfer, uh, the, the transfer of crucial skills gives the opportunity for sustainable growth. For our employees, it provides the opportunity to make a personal contribution while de whilst developing their skills in leadership, collaboration, and project management as part of their career development. And for our company, it's an important part of our commitment to the developing world and an investment in our future with globally oriented managers. So this is, this is what the private sector is really looking for, at least the part of the private sector that thinks strategically, is basically saying, okay, what is good for our staff? You know, what is good for our company, and ultimately, what is good for the communities that we want to engage with. So we want to find win-win-win situations where we make meaningful contributions to communities using the expertise and knowledge of our staff in a meaningful way that actually gives something to those staff to expose them to new experiences and new uh, realms where they can get the skills together to be globally oriented, uh, oriented managers. So uh, that was a, just a little bit of a, a, a tangential point about volunteering, but many businesses will come and ask for partnerships that include an element of volunteering. And I think when we do that, we need to make sure it's, it's, it's strategic. So I've been working in this space for a long, 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 long time. Um, and, and I just want to make a few observations um, around some, some, some lessons learned. Finding the right partners and the right fit is, is really, really important. It's worth spending time making sure that you have the foundations of good partnerships, partnerships that can continue, partnerships that involve people who like each other. And, and I can't under, overestimate the the importance of that personal linkage. Uh, I think those personal linkages are really, really important, but also are a source of risk. 
because when personal people move on and they have those personal linkages, that can often be a source of, 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 of some, some problem. Finding the resources for a good partnership is also very, very important. And I'm not just talking about financial resources. You know, the, partner it sh the partnership itself will require resourcing. And, and people under-consider that, I think. You will have to spend time and money just building and maintaining that, uh, that partnership and making sure that there isn't a sort of misallocation of, of, of costs and benefits. For me, power relationships are always an issue. Um, often you've got the big, big multinational corporation with large amounts of assets and you've got the much, much smaller NGO. Sometimes it's the other way around, but usually it's the, the private sector that has, the, has, the, has, has, has all the cash. Sometimes what that results in is a misuse of power. And unfortunately, I have seen large businesses who come, become somewhat arrogant and start pushing around their, their smaller NGO partners. And I think both sides have to be cognizant of that risk and, and, and avoid it. And the last thing I need to, to, to raise, I think, is, 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 is planning for exit. I think when you enter into a partnership, you need to plan for its exit as well. Partnerships will not last forever. You have to remember that when the private sector thinks long term, they're generally thinking three to five years. When many NGOs think long term, they're thinking 10 to 20. There are very, very, very few private sector partnerships that I can think of that have lasted more than a decade. Much, much more common is that three to five year span. So you know, one of the things I think you need to do when you're entering into a partnership is plan for the exit. That means the end of the partnership and the end of the project, or it means the project continues, but without the dependency on the private sector. Because the last thing the private sector wants to create these days is dependency. Because in the long run, you, make, you do more harm than good. So my very last slide is really looking at what I think makes successful and innovative partnerships. Firstly, I think leadership. Leadership from, from, from people within the private sector, but also within the partner organization, whether that's government or NGOs, is, is, is really important. And I think getting senior management on board is, 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 is really, really important for, for both sides of the, the relationship as well. Um, I think that if you're going to get into a partnership, you have to be committed to real change. Um, I, I, I think a partnership has to be about creating change. If it's just about branding and reputation, that's good or not, not, not good enough. I think there have to be these interesting stories to tell. You have to be able to show that you've created uh, ultimately some sort of, 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 of impact. Good partnerships, I think, are built on honest and, uh, and transparent relationships. Um, so that you ultimately do trust each other and there's nothing hidden and there's nothing secretive behind the sort of mask and that you really do know who you are uh, 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 talking to. And ultimately, I th think <coughs> I think that what makes a really successful partnership is shared goals. Um, and that means that both sides have ownership over the project, genuinely work together on the project or, 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 or projects and collectively make the, the partnership uh, a, a success. So I think in my 20 minutes, that gives you a bit of an overview of what, what, what my take is on partnerships with the private sector. And I, now I think we're going to move on to some, some more practical examples.